I have the guts to cut off Charlie McBride, and I do not have the guts to cut off George Darlington, and Jared Thomas. So it was what an honor to have them all here. Questions? What was their message? Uh, you know, Coach Darlington comes to every practice. He comes to Sunday night walkthrough or Monday walkthrough. He comes to Tuesday morning practice. Comes to Wednesday night practice. He comes to Friday. You know, he'll come to everything. So he's there every day. Um, you know, he's always he always talks to me about everything that they did, and and he's you know, he still teaches football classes, right? So, a lot, you know, he's definitely super up. So it's always fun to talk football with him. These are the men I looked up to. These are the men I used to go to AFCA conventions and listen to speak, right? Um, um, you know, uh, Red Baron, you know, member of the national championship team, I mean, you know, he, he, he comes to practice every week. So we have a core group of former alums that come during the week, you know, different times. You know, Jared Tomich, I think, just shared with the guys a little bit about just, you know, what it means to be an alum and the, the great memories he has of helping each other and being on the sidelines and how proud they are. And then uh, Coach McBride, um, he, he was the D coordinator. He was talking about, you know, getting after it and the way we play and the way we attack people. And, um, you know, as I said to our team, I, you know, uh, Trev introduced them, but I, th I said it's really cool when, you know, obviously people people are going to come watch us win, but I think Coach McBride, Coach Darlene, they, they want to come watch us play. You know, there's a standard they want us to play at. So it's not just about the scoreboard, it's about the way we play. And that's our message to the players all the time. And that doesn't mean we're not trying to win. It means we're trying to do something greater than just winning. And hear it from those guys was really cool. What do you think it means to the players? Did you get a sense from looking at them what it means to hear from Coach McBride, guys like that? Um, I think it means a lot to them. You know, we just took, we we just as we broke it, we were just saying, hey, everybody whose dad played for uh, Coach McBride, he wanted to get a picture with all the sons of the guys he coached, which was which was pretty cool. So, um, our our guys are well versed in the legacy of the teams and the the heritage of the football that came before them, and so um, they uh, I think I think to hear it from them, but I think also to hear Coach McBride talk about you know how proud he is. To be in the stands in Illinois and sit with a couple of former players and watch our guys play, and I think you know it's it's one thing to feel like hey, there's a legacy I need to live up to. It's nice when you hear those guys say, hey, we're proud of the way you're working. We're proud of the way you played in this game. That's that's validation that um, you know when you walk by these guys' names and faces on the wall every day, to hear them say, hey, I think you're doing a good job. Uh, it's pretty cool. How critical is it to have a guy like? Phelan, I, I know you spoke longingly about him before, but just the way he stepped into that role when Deshaun went down and how he's handled his business. Yeah, Phelan's played great. Uh, Phelan, um, and Phelan, Phelan's an example of what we try to do. He's pr he proved it on the practice field. Um, you know, it's competition. Like, you know, you, you go into Tuesday practice. If you don't practice well, you might not start on Saturday. If you don't practice well on Wednesday, you might, you know, if there's someone practicing better. It's just all fair. It's all competition. And when there was an opportunity, you know, we, we moved multiple guys around. You know, Malcolm went to safety. You know, so we have a bunch of good players. But, but Phelan has just stepped up, and he's maintained his excellence on special teams as well. So I think he's really an invaluable member of the football team. Um, and I'll just say this. He set an example for our team this summer, you know, because he, he was a former walk-on. He was put on scholarship in the spring. I had, you know, we had an extra scholarship just for the spring, and we, you know, had roster management. Hey, I'm... You know, not sure if I can do it in the fall. And um, never came to me and said, well, if I'm not on scholarship, I don't think I'm going to come. You know, he just was like, what, whatever it takes, coach. And uh, we were able to put him on scholarship this fall because he's beyond deserving. Um, but the hard part of this job is sometimes it's just the numbers and the rules. But never never let his commitment to the team waver based upon his own circumstances. You know, he's not circumstance-based. And um, so then you, when you see him having success on the football field, that's a great example for young guys like, if I don't let my circumstances dictate and I just continue to work every single day, eventually things will work out. So there's not a thing that we don't give. Like if they say, hey, coach, we want to try to do this special thing with Phelan, I'm, I'm all in. I trust him to get things done. How do you feel like those freshman wide receivers practice this week? Great week. Great week. Great week of practice. Um, great really two weeks. And... Um, um, well, they're ready to go. I mean, there's, there's, I know this. I mean, they might be young, right? But uh, they're, they're as fast as any group of receivers in the country. So not very often you have 10, 3, 10, 4 guys out there. So, um, you know, they've, they've each made a play. Um, uh, maybe not Jaden, but Jalen and Malachi have each made a play in games. Alex Bullock's made a big play, a couple big plays in games. Ty's made big plays. Billy's a baller. So um, they're ready to play. You know, the, as I said to them, kind of the narrative of like, well, you know, we've got some guys, you know, We've had to manage what we're doing to fit who we have, but those guys can play. And uh, I'm anxious to see – I'm excited to see them play. 
Uh, I, I know every position in the college football is hard for a freshman, but I think there's an impression that it's easier to play receiver as a freshman, and it's it's, it's not, right? Like, it's actually harder than others. Significantly harder. Right. Significantly harder. Because... Um, well, I mean, it depends on where you go, right? I mean, if you're in, like, a spread offense that has, like, four or five concepts, maybe, right? But our receivers didn't come in mid-year either. That, you know, that's the other thing, right? Like, nowadays, like, I mean, there, there's some schools. I mean, I, I think, you know, like, I, talked, I was talking to the guys at Clemson. Like, like, I think their whole class came in mid-year, pretty close to it. Nowadays, with, you know, the, the, the pressure to win right away, like, you're bringing everyone in mid-year. Jalen, Jade, and Malachi all showed up in the summer. So, um that's difficult, but I just think it's just the volume of offense and the volume of things that you have to do. And, you know, we go against our team every week, and they're a man-free, you know, uh, team and play some cover too. And, you know, you run certain routes for that, right? Or you have certain reads, and all of a sudden now you get into the Big Ten, which is predominantly a quarters conference, and now you're running some different routes and some different adjustments. And, you know, so for the quarterbacks and those guys, it's a little bit of a challenge. You know, when you have your time under your belt, this time next year, this will, these guys, it'll be a breeze for them. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of things you have to do at receiver. And you also have to learn how to really take care of your body because you're running all the time. Um, it's way easier to come in and rush the passer, right? You know, you can just situationally kind of go out there. And people will say to me, like our defensive coaches will say, well, just put so-and-so in and just run this play with them. Well, yeah, okay, you can do it a couple times a game, but it's pretty hard as a coordinator to always be like, hey, give me this guy for this play, give me this guy for this play. Really, at the end of the day, like we need receivers to go win on third down, and that's a multitude of things that we have to do. So these guys are at that point, though. They can play, and they're ready to play. What's that like for you to watch Garrett um, as a first-year assistant to go through this process with so many young players when, when he had older players that just aren't available to him now? Yeah, um, I think it's really, really, really sharpening him as a coach. Um, you know, when you, you know, anybody, anybody, uh, to me, the great coaches do a couple different things. They get, they get difference makers to be difference makers. You know, the worst thing in the world is when your difference makers aren't making a difference. They're just kind of there, you know. Um, so they get great players to play great. Sometimes great players are just talented, you know, and you have to bring it out of them. Um, but they also, they also, you know, they don't live in the tyranny of comfort. They don't just play the guys who, hey, I know he knows all the plays. They, they pour themselves into the guys who can, you know, who can step up and make a difference and find a way to get them on the field. And so, um, you know, they also don't let learning be an issue. You know, I mean, whatever it takes, you know, if you have to, if you have to move in with somebody to get them ready, I mean, um, so, I, I, you know, I've been around a lot of coaches in my time, Mitch, who are like, well, he just, he can't learn it. Anybody can learn if they want to learn. So I think Garrett's done a great job of bringing these guys along, not giving them too much too early so that they're overwhelmed. But it's their time. They're ready. We had a bye week, second, second half of the season, first game, excellent opponent, great opportunity for them. Tristan made a couple of kicks against Illinois. Did you see since that game, um, you know, an improvement in confidence or just like his consistency? The thing I love about Tristan is I don't really feel like, oh man, I got to be careful with him here. Like he don't, I don't feel like a drop in his confidence, you know. I mean, because 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 when he does miss, it's just technical, right? Like, you know, when I slice, you know, my seven irons because they know I have the, I don't even know why, but it's technical, right? So, I mean. Um, you know, he missed the one kick last week, but it was a bobbled hold, a bobbled snap and hold. Like, I mean, for him actually to get that ball as close to as it was, was was really a challenge. So, I'm happy with where he is. You know, um, he's he. I love I I love the fact when young players struggle to go through some adversity, and I see them not cracking but getting stronger. Like, either you crack this thing or you get cracked. You know, and he's at the precipice of of something great, I think. And so, um, he's handling it well. He'll only get better and better. I have confidence in him. And, um, I mean, even in that game, you know, we put him out there the third time just to make it a three-score game. So um, he's handled it really well. I think he'll play well. At Northwestern's 3-3, three and three, what can you say about their resolve given everything that happened on that campus over the offseason? Well, as I said, you know, uh, Pat Fitzgerald is, is, is a friend of mine. And Pat Fitzgerald is someone that I let my son go play for. I don't, I can't speak to everything that happened there. So, just in terms of me knowing him as a man, I respect him. And you know, his son is on the team. His son stayed there. You know, so um, I just think, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Coach Braun's done an amazing job. You know, when you have a coach that's probably really regarded, and you have that kind of chaos right before the season. Nowadays, the minute your coach leaves you, the portal window opens. And maybe they had one, two, three. I don't know what they had four. You guys know that better than me. But the team didn't all just leave. And I think that speaks a lot to them. It's, it probably speaks a lot to what a Northwestern degree means, what their time there means. But they're playing for each other. And, you know, they got off to a tough start maybe for the first game they lost. They came back. They battled back. 
But you see them in Minnesota, and you see the way. I mean, they're down 31-10 with 12 minutes left, and they come all the way back. I mean, how do you do that? You know, how do you do that? And they did it. And um, so I just – I don't know Coach Braun, but it's just, it's just really impressive what he's done, what the rest of that staff's done, what those players have done. They're playing for each other, and they're a really good football team. That's the big thing is it's not like it's like – you know they're a really good football team. Like you know, you got to you got to go defend Henning. You got to go defend Campor. You got to go. I mean, they got guys who can play, and they're tough and physical, and they're play rugged on defense. So um, they're excellent. You know, excellent third down offense. They stay on the field. So it, it's it's um, it's a good football team that's playing for the right reasons and playing for each other. And a team that has purpose and will die for a cause is really hard to hard to beat. I know you've been crazy focused on preparing for the game, but I did want to ask you just about the big volleyball match on, on Saturday night, September 1 versus number 2. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you get a chance to go to it or not or take it in, but just uh, sort of the enthusiasm on campus for, for such a big event that isn't football, but football. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I love our, our women's volleyball team, and I love, I love the, the, the women that are on it. Coach Cook means a great deal to me, um, you know, in those kind of tough moments early in the year when you lose a couple games, it's you know it's John Cook and a bunch of our other coaches, but Coach Cook is the one kind of hitting me up. So I, I I'm excited for them. I've watched pretty much every match because I have two daughters at home that want to be Nebraska volleyball players, and so I mean you you we say hey, hey can we watch the Michigan match? I'm like yeah, I think we're gonna watch the highlights, the 12 minute highlight. It's an hour and 31 minutes straight through of watching volleyball, but I'm fascinated by the sport, fascinated by them. So my daughters want to go. I know um, we have some recruits that want to go. I'll be honest with you, Sam. I pass out after every game. I might go home and I am out. It's like when I was an assistant, you know, like you're kind of like you're, you have this knot in your stomach on offense or on defense, and then the other side of the ball you can relax. Like I have a knot on my stomach the whole game, so I'll probably pass out. But I don't, you know, Julie and the girls. I think they want to go, so you might see me there. <laughs> I don't make a lot of decisions in my house. You know, obviously there's the Sorry. X's and O's you know, concept of getting ready for a game, but you describe Northwestern as a team that's just going to fight and just play really hard. Like, how do you get your team ready for that aspect of them? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's who we better be. That's who we want to be, you know. Um, we're 3-3 three and three just like them. And so um, I'm not a big, like, hey, last year this game they beat you. Get ready for that. You know, I'm not that, right? I'm not. Um, I'm just sort of like, I really am. Like, one. Hey, this is an opportunity for us to go 1-0 this week. For me, honestly, it's been two weeks since I, I – Friday night at Illinois is one of the most fun experiences for me, just being in that locker room with those guys and that vibe and that energy on the road. I mean, I, I'll tell you, walking out and their, their crowd booing us, it was like I felt alive. Like I was excited. You know, I think back to the COVID year of us walking out in the empty stadium. I, I loved it. And I love being with the guys. Like I like to walk out with the captains. I, don't, I, like, I like to let the team run out. I don't want to run out with the team. Let them have that moment, right? And just walking out with the captain. So I'm excited just to have that opportunity to go do that again, right? To walk out with the team, to go watch them play. We've got to, I think we have good players. I want to see them play. But that toughness, that playing for each other, that's, I mean, you guys listen to me, you know, you know, preach basically on Mondays about what, our, what I want our team to be about. It's because I want our team to be just like Northwestern team is. Like, I want us fighting every week for each other and for what we want, not for the things that come with winning, but to win and be a good football team. So um, you need to play teams like Northwestern that are doing the same thing because you, you, it, it's, a, it's a barometer into your soul of, hey, how tough are we? How, you know, like obviously Illinois was a great test for us to see how we could bounce back from Michigan. This is a great test for us to see, hey, after a bye week, you know, how much do we really want to play for each other? How much do we really love this game? How much do we love this team? Um, and I don't question at all our effort. It'll come down to like blocking and tackling. Like you can try really hard and still, I could still miss the block on you, right? I could still miss the tackle. It's going to come down to technique and execution and playing fast and playing hard. Um, but I expect us to play well. Back to volleyball for a second. Like in the off season, um, with your uh, winter condition and stuff, all of you guys went to a bunch of different events and all of that. And then Heinrich this week talked about the importance of su supporting volleyball and all of that. Just even though you guys are in the season, how important is that still for you to? You know, with the commentary with all the other athletes. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is is because we utilize the same training table, the same academic space, and because everyone sort of flows through here, you just get to know the student athletes. You know, so um, I'd much prefer to get to know the, the, them as people. You know, instead of just someone in a jersey. But you know, like in, in the preseason, we went to the soccer game. Um, you know, I, I, I was talking to coach. You know, it's uh, big, the last golf match is coming up. You know, so I want to. I want to um, 
be a part of all those things. It's why you, it's why you love being at the University of Nebraska because there's excellence abounds, right? That's why we go take the players to go see um, um, Hamilton. You know, I want them to be around excellence, and the volleyball team is certainly excellent. So, um, I think it's really important for our guys to understand that they're part of something bigger, not just the team, but also uh, the athletic department, also the university, also the state. Um, so that that's why we try to do those things. But you know, to me, when you go watch. Our, our women's volleyball team play, like you're watching the best people in the world at what they do. And that's pretty cool to me, you know. So um, I, I hope I get to go Saturday. Not, you're, making me, you're making me think I, I should go. So if I, maybe I'll go. Um, but I, no matter what, I know they're going to be ready to play. I know they're going to be fired up to go. And I know you'll see a bunch of our players there too.